also sprout and cauliflower, onion, fennel and cucumber, plum, pear and papaya Aubergine and sire, lime, lentils and quinoa, oatmeal bread and oatmeal flour, watercress and okra, tofu and sweet pepper Ever since I've been vegan, I've tried very hard to reach people of different religions. Thus, I started reading up different religious literature. Basically to learn of other religions, see what they're really like, and generally figure out where do they stand ethically, and so on. Like, not only because of veganism, I also have a huge interest in religion. I've uh, basically studied religion most of my life. While doing outreach, I've figured Christians might be the hardest to reach. Uh, Muslims are easier to reach than Christians. Hindus are easier to reach than Muslims. I don't really know for Buddhists because I haven't been able to preach veganism to Buddhists a lot. The, the only few that I talk to has been very ignorant, which is quite a contradictory to their core belief. People have been asking me for what is my core religious belief and I've just tried to remain religiously neutral and I do that in the public space as well. However, there is reasons for this. I really did grow up devout Christian and after some time I actually read the Bible then I went through reading of Bible history, then I re read a lot of non-canonical Gospels, other religions, and after some time I started to look at religious history. I've also spent some time in the alternative community and so on, and after some time it's not like I've ever left Christianity, though I feel like in some way I've just evolved beyond the branch of faiths, or what I, should I say, non-faiths, that took me the longest to understand, I guess was atheism. I just didn't understand how people could be so ignorant that they were to have in the core belief that there isn't anything, <laughs> looking at how huge the entire universe is and many things that we just didn't know in the past and such and such. However, today, I wonder how people who don't have the experience that I have are not agnostics. There's no secret that there are people who did something different than I have done. To actually double down and actually become an atheist or a religious skeptic. So the last couple of years or so, there is one YouTuber that I've been following greatly from the atheist community, which is Cosmic Skeptic. He makes such a good case for veganism. And I'm just so perplexed of how well he does it. Given that, you live in a city, you, you live in an area where it's, where it's perfectly possible to go vegan, and equally, 99% of all of the animals that end up on the plates of Americans comes from factory farming. It's amazing the kind of cognitive dissonance we're seeing as people begin to call themselves environmentalists and begin to really make strides to change the world in that area. People are willing to stop using plastic straws to save the fish. They won't stop eating fish to save the fish. The point is, uh, again, Alex, I'm not a perfect activist and there are always things I could improve on, but you don't have to be a perfect activist to speak for the animals. Hmm. I, think, I think that's about right. Um, trivially, Different approaches work for different people, and it's good to have all of them available. Um, and I don't think we should expect individual activists to have each shade within themselves, but rather for each individual activist to represent one of those shades. Breakfast just got a whole lot tastier. Love eyes emoji, licking lips emoji. Give me a break. Right? The only comment that I could find complaining about this post was someone upset that they no longer sell a steak, egg, and cheese bagel. Cognitive dissonance. I do know how we can ensure that another devastating pandemic does happen again. The answer? Factory farming. They may not appreciate your philosophy. Well, absolutely. I mean, the first point to make is that I like the way the food tastes as well. I just think that taste pleasure is, is in a different moral universe to something like the life, torture and suffering of an animal. Atheists aren't really that easy to reach either. Like, I've tried to be on skeptic pages where people are just totally ignorant and stubborn towards veganism as well. But recently, there are more atheist YouTubers that actually go vegan. 
Recently, I, uh, I checked up this other atheist YouTuber that I've been watching for some time, which is called Genetically Modified Skeptic, and I could find nothing on veganism. But all of a sudden, Alex O'Connor shared this video from late last year that he basically talked about veganism. If we so ground our principle of equal consideration, though, we find no basis for refusing equal moral consideration for non-humans with a capacity for suffering. Although it would conflict with a behavior I wanted to continue doing using animal products. To pinpoint a time when I actually began mulling it over, it might have been when I overheard Alex O'Connor and Armin Navabi casually debating the topic in person. I feel like humanism is the next step uh, that people will take. It's not something that I advocate, that's somebody else's job, that's what someone like Andrew Copson might do. Um, but also, I don't like calling myself a humanist for the, for the rather controversial reason of, of not thinking that we should put just humans at the basis of our, of our ethic and morality. I would call myself a subscriber of... Um... Thank you. I'm, I'm glad somebody agrees. If instead of grounding our ethical principle of equal consideration in the regard for a capacity for suffering, we grounded it in the regard for a capacity for high intelligence, conscious foresight, existential anxiety, belonging to a community, individual autonomy, a sense of justice, or respecting the rights of others, we'd have ourselves an ethical principle of equal consideration which excludes either human infants, young children, people living apart from society, some people who are mentally handicapped, or all of the above. Any sort of explanation of animal suffering which utilized analogies to any level of human suffering, even those where animal suffering wasn't said to be comparably severe, made me angry. It's utterly dehumanizing, insulting to humans to compare or draw analogy between the suffering of humans and animals, I thought. At some point, I spoke this thought aloud to myself and quickly realized its obvious flaws. Humans are animals. My disgust at any analogy between the suffering of human animals and the suffering of non-human animals was an attitude based not on the consideration of some fact of biology, but on my natural human inclination toward irrational human exceptionalism. Humans possess no special, ineffable, metaphysical quality which separates us from other animals, and when it comes to moral consideration, we have no reason other than rash human instinct to place ourselves on a pedestal. Right now, though, I don't find the humanist label to be as useful in describing myself as I once did. This video is not meant as a dig at humanism or humanists because such a dig, I think, would be grounded in little more than what's been called the narcissism of small differences. I won't pretend humanists can't agree with me on all of this or that I don't share most of my values with humanists. While the following labels have their own drawbacks and that they're either lesser known or often poorly understood, I do like the labels of sentientist and ethical vegan when they can be usefully communicated. Where I've in the past tried to reach out to religious people, it seems like now we've got advocates reaching out to the skeptic community. Which is great, and this is something that I've tried to explain to people, and the core reason why I'm basically against the idea of intersectionalism, well, modern intersectionalism, <laughs> is that we need vegans from all cores of society. Like, I'm sure they would be glad to have even more people going atheist. However, it's not realistic to aim for making people atheist and vegan at the same time, if you see what I mean. Well, does it make sense for atheists to not be vegan? I'd say no, and that is just for the core reason that atheism is about logic. And to feel that you are, are obliged to kill animals isn't really being skeptical towards their sentience and the core reasons why we don't do the same thing to humans. And I know like I sound like this small YouTuber that tried to reach out to some kind of huge YouTuber, but that's really what I have to do right now. Because YouTube has grown so huge and although I have this massive video production that I'm doing, I haven't been able to grow as fast as I wanted to. Although I feel like I produce on their level, I just can't get there. Um, I, I want to talk to these people, and I just feel too small. 
But if this video reached out to either Alex or Drew, I'd like to talk to you on my channel. These issues at hand is basically something I want to talk to them, the both of them. So I hope that I can reach out to you and we can have a conversation.